So here we are. We we're in this unnerving situation with Putin up to what he's up to, the Red Army doing what they're up to, the Ukrainian people being showing remarkable fortitude and courage and bravery and uh, endurance, all kinds of things happening. But we're still asking the question, what's going on and where will it all end? Let me, let me give you some answers to these, to these questions. Now, there are two ways of looking at it. We, we, can, we can look at the, what is actually happening today, or we can ask ourselves, what is the end game? You see, down through the, the Christian centuries, there has always been a looking for the end times, the, the fulfillment of eschatology. And generation after generation have thought they were the generation in which it was going to happen. And it never did. So all these generations have gone by and they have one thing in common. They all got it wrong. They all got it wrong. What they needed to realize was this, that there are some things that we can be sure about, but we mustn't get ourselves off down a rabbit trail onto something else. And there are three things I want to identify for you that I would say are the end game. This is what's going to happen. This is where it's all going to end. The first thing is this. The Bible says the day of the Lord will come. The Bible also says that Jesus will return. And the Bible also says that God is doing a new thing. He is making new heavens and new earth wherein dwell righteousness. Those are the three things that are going to happen. Those are the three things that are immovable. Those are the three pillars of eschatological statement. Now there are lots of other details in between now and whenever that happens. But what we, we, do, we, don't, we don't know. That's where the arguments take place. That's where the uncertainty reigns. But what we do know is this. The day of the Lord will come. Okay, let's look at that very, very briefly. When it says that the day of the Lord will come, the expression the day of the Lord is a very common one in the Old Testament and it is picked up in the New Testament. And as the day of the Lord speaks of a great time when God is going to bring to finality the affairs of this world that he's created for one simple reason. The God who created and the God who sustains the created order is the one who reserves the right to terminate what he created and what he sustains. And this God has said that, that, that is what's going to, that's what's going to happen. And in very dramatic language, quite often in the Old Testament, and sometimes in the New Testament, we, we have descriptions of the great cataclysmic day when God will bring things to a termination according to his grand cosmic eternal plans. Now, that, now that's something we've got to be clear about. The day of the Lord will come. When it will come, we're not told. How exactly it will come, with as much detail as we'd like, is not necessarily made available to us. But to just lay hold on this one thing. If we're looking at the mess that the world is in at the moment, and we're asking what's going on and where will it all end, the answer is it will all end in the day of the Lord. Now, when we get into the New Testament, we discover something that gives us more detail on this. It's not just the day of the Lord. Now it's, it is the return of Christ. And what Scripture teaches is this. The same Jesus, who was born as a baby and lived a righteous life and died a cruel death and rose again from the dead and ascended to the Father's right hand, has gone back to the place of glory at the Father's right hand, waiting until his enemies be made his footstool 
and then he will come back again. Jesus said to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go away, I will come again. That is something that is definite. That is something that we lay hold on. So now we realize, in addition to the great cataclysmic day when God will bring to a finality all the created order that he has made and which he has sustained, now in addition to that, the Lord Jesus, the exalted Son of God, the risen, glorified Saviour and Lord of all, he will come again to establish his eternal kingdom. Now here's something very interesting. When the biblical writers t wrote about or talked about the day of the Lord, they used two different expressions. In the Old Testament prophecy of Joel, Joel talked about the, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, he talked about the great and glorious day of the Lord. Now they were talking about the same thing. But to one it was dreadful, to the other it was glorious. The reason for that is this. The, when in the day of the Lord, or when Christ returns, two things will happen. Those who have been God's enemies will come into judgment and eternal separation from God. And those who are the Lord's, who have been called by him and have been restored into newness of life in him and have lived rightly before the Lord, they are going to find this is the great and glorious day of the Lord. Why? Because when Jesus comes, they will see him. So we have these two expressions all talking about the same thing. The great and dreadful day of the Lord and the great and glorious day of the Lord. And to some it will be dreadful, a time of judgment and separation from God. For others it will be glorious. Now let me move on to talk about what, what's glorious ab about it. Remember the three things we can be sure of? Number one, the day of the Lord will come. Number two, Jesus will return. Number three, God is making new heavens and new earth characterized by righteousness. God's made an announcement and he said, I'm doing a new thing. Not only did he make that announcement, he said, write it down. In other words, let's make sure we have a, a, a copy of this. This is big news. This is critical news. This is glorious news. I am going to make new heavens and new earth. I, I think this world in which we live is absolutely fabulous, but it's fallen. But I get so excited about this fabulous fallen world that I can't even begin to imagine what it will be like even more fabulous and not fallen. That's where we're heading. That's the end of the story. And this great and wonderful day of the Lord will happen when the world as we know it will pass away and in his place God will make new heavens and new earth. It will be populated by a new race of people. They will be the redeemed. They will be the ones who have heard the message of the gospel and responded by the grace of God and been born again of the Spirit of God. This, this is... This is what is going to happen. Just imagine a perfect new world characterized by righteousness. Professor N.T. Wright says that means everything will be put right. Just try to imagine this world of ours, fabulous as it is, fallen as it is, dreadful as it can be, as it is right now. But what, just imagine what it's going to be like when it is absolutely perfect. Not only that, there's something else to think about. Jesus will come to the point where everything is subjected to him and then he will subject himself to the Father with everything subjected to him and God will be seen to be all in all. And this is what's going to happen. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That's glorious. That's wonderful. That's where we're heading. That is what's going to happen. Now then, here is the big question. 
If it is true that all this eschatological teaching is not so that we can identify persons and events and make them fit into our calendars today, but in actual fact they are predictions about what is about to come at the end of time, what do we, what do, we do with all this? This is something we need to be concerned about. What we need to recognize is this, that as I said a few minutes ago, that we need to recognize that the eschatological teaching is both ethical and redemptive. The redemptive teaching of the coming of the day of the Lord is that our salvation will be completed when we see Jesus. It's incomplete at the moment. Uh, we, we talk about God heals our bodies. Not everybody gets healed down here on earth. Nobody would die if, if they, uh, everybody got healed. So we can go to heaven unhealed. But he says he will heal all our diseases. That's in the eschaton. That's in the future. That is at the great and glorious day of the Lord. For we will be given new bodies like Christ's resurrection body. So... We we need to we need, we need to say to ourselves what what what's what's going to happen when when we move into this the eschatological age? Well, we, we there's, there will be some ethical ramifications. There will be some redemptive ramifications. Redemptive, our salvation will be complete. Ethical, this is what this is what Peter said seeing that all these things are going to be dissolved, what kinds of people ought we to be? What kind of people ought we to be? Let me just read that to you from, from Scripture, Second Peter 3. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, listen, what kind of people ought you to be? This is a question. We know what God is going to do. We know what God is doing. We know the ramifications of that. We know that the things that have happened in our lives and the things that will happen in our lives because of what God is doing. But what are we doing? And the answer is, we should be living holy and godly lives as we look forward to the day of God and listen and speed its coming. Well, that's fascinating. What are the ethical ramifications of believing in the eschatological future? The answer is, it is a stimulus to holy living. It is a stimulus to godly living. It is a stimulus to live in hope and expectation of the day of the Lord will come and Christ will return. And more than that, it is also a day of seeking to speed his coming. And I'm, I'm going to leave this, this talk at this point, although there's much, much more I could say. This is what I want to leave with you. I want to leave with you a question. How do you think given that God has his grand cosmic eternal purposes and plan and that he is working it according to his own timetable and he will bring about all that he has determined, what possible role can you and I play in speeding its coming? Well, here's a clue. One of the eschatological promises is this. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all nations then comes the end. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all nations. Then comes the end. We can spe help speed the coming of the Lord as we help speed the spreading of the gospel to all nations. So I started out by asking the question, what's going on and where will it all end? And I hope we've got some answers there from Scripture, and God bless you.